Okay, let's get on it. Daily chart, S&P 500. Uh, S&P 500 futures have reached all-time high today, 59.18 and 0.5. I said maybe last week sometime or two weeks ago, I said I thought that the market would hit 5,900, maybe even 6,000, and I still think that's true. Obviously, today we did hit 5,900, and I, see, I think 6,000 is also possible. Yes, we're supposed to have this uh, big low here. Um, guys and gals, it hasn't happened yet. There's no, not even the smallest of hints that it's going to happen. We'll wait to see what happens. So far, nada. Uh, though I will say the market looks pretty strong up here at 70, at 74. But it's not near 88 or 76, we'll call it, 77. Uh, continues to be very bullish. Okay. Let's look at the weekly chart here to get a little bit better view of long-term stuff going on okay where are we at here um 82 88 i've seen over there this was 79 so yeah it's a little bit elevated here as far as the smi goes so there was an october 13th cycle low never happened look at that completely ignored this was a pretty good uh, cycle too that that was forecasted here. Like if you look at this cycle, the last two big cycles here and here didn't happen. Today's the fourteenth. Not even a hint of the decline. Nothing. So so much for the decline there in the middle of October. Um, it's crossed over again. Extremely bullish. Way up here. One seventy three almost. Okay, SMI is in an area that you might think there might could be a pullback. It doesn't mean it'll happen. I honestly don't think there's anything stopping this market from going to 6,000. I really don't. And yes, investors could get nervous about the U.S. elections. And so could big funds and hedge funds and all that and start dumping whatever. Hasn't happened yet. Of course, we got some really small candlesticks up in here on the weekly chart, kind of small. But then again, that's nothing new. There's small ones here. You know, small, small. Okay, so it's not anything new, isn't it? Nothing about this chart tells me, gee, we're going down. You know, only thing here is this is a little bit elevated. But we just crossed over. And I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Uh, I also believe the stock market is a reflection of a, potentially starting to reflect a runaway economy where it's too hot and can't be slowed down. I mean, look at this. Never touch the bottom. We, we know this. We see this in daily uh, intraday charts. Doesn't touch the bottom. Doesn't touch the bottom. This market's bullish. This is very bullish when you see this. Doesn't touch the bottom. Right? It's just on fire on fire look at this crossed over on fire again going even higher so do i think we could get a pullback here yeah but it may not be nearly as deep as we originally thought especially sitting way up here at 5900 this might only pull back just a couple hundred points and then march on into the new year who knows okay anybody that's telling you they know exactly what's going to happen they're full of it i mean the market completely ignored this very uh expected cycle look at this three two times before over here was a little bit different but it was a little bit early we didn't get any of that completely ignored october 13th ish area for a cycle low never happened okay so november 10th is, is the next one on the weekly chart looks eh, kind of hit and miss back over here but it, it but starting from somewhere like right in this area back in october of 2023 Okay, that green cycle looks fairly reliable. But then again, what does that mean? <laughs> when you got a market like this that ignores anticipated cycles. Okay. Um, I just think the market does reflect a runaway economy. It's beginning to, in my opinion, I've been saying this for the last few months, reflecting a runaway economy. 
And I think we're going to hit some serious, serious doo-doo. That's an old saying. Doo-doo, poo-poo. We're, we're going to hit some serious poop in the American economy. And yeah, I know I'm pulling that same bell, ringing that same bell, saying the same thing over and over. I'm telling you, there's going to be a massive economic collapse in the American economy in 10 years or less. And I believe the U.S. dollar is going to probably go to $50. Right now it's at 100 I think. 101 It's going to go down to 50 bucks, maybe lower. And we have major, major security issues, major uh, problems with criminals coming over the border. And all that's going to exasperate. We've got people that are being pushed out of their homes. We have uh, veterans Military veterans being kicked out of their, uh, of their homes to make room for illegal immigrants. We have missing children. The government says 300,000 children. Guess what? It's probably more like a million. Because the government, especially the left, if they're moving their mouth, they're lying. You know what's happened with some of these kids, right? I mean, I don't have to put it into words, do I? They're not all sitting in a room doing kumbaya playing PlayStation. <laughs> these children are being trafficked and, and horrible things are happening to these children. And the left makes George and Alex Soros and other leftists, uh, Marxists, socialists, even Democrats, and yes, rhinos, they're making big, big money on this open border. That's why they hate Donald Trump, said it before, because he stops the border invasion, which stops massive money flow. How do they make money? Drugs, human trafficking, sex trafficking, and I'm not even going to say what they're doing with these kids. It's absolutely disgusting. And I'm just talking about uh, a child labor forced labor, which they were caught doing that already, I think, in the Southeast somewhere in the U.S. No, 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 it's much worse than that. And I'm not going to put it into words because it's just absolutely disgusting what's going on with these kids. Don't expect any mainstream media to tell you about it. Yeah. So just, you know, since this channel is primarily primarily about trading and the, the economy of the United States of America, I try to stick to that topic. But they are definitely interrelated, right? The political policies, whatever parties and sitting in the White House or controls the Senate or the House or both or whatever has a major influence on the, the stability or instability of, of the United States of America, right? There's no getting around it. So whoever's in the White House, whatever party's controlling the Senate and the, and the House of Representatives has a major influence on the economy, which we've seen that in the last four years. His economy took a huge hit because of the leftist policies. You know, Barack Obama came out the other day, a.k.a. Barry Sitaro, came out and had a little two-year-old temper tantrum and told black people, uh, uh, you can't vote for Donald Trump. you got to vote, vote for Kamala. How, this is wrong that black people are voting for Trump. And yet... It's, it's the conservatives that are accused of being racist. What a disgusting slob that guy is. What an ass. Barry Sitaro, your time has come and gone. Shut the hell up. Get out of the way. You're no longer president of the United States. We know you're working behind the scenes, you scumbag. Um, here's my take on all this. Even if Donald Trump gets into the White House, like I said before, I think it will slow things down a bit. But I think the collapse of the American economy is still going to happen, just take longer. Um, I mentioned today on the Discord server that Americans really need to be prepared to defend themselves. And I know that a lot of people out there are going to say, oh, you're being a uh, fear monger. You're being a uh, conspiracy theorist. You're overreacting, blah, blah, blah. If you didn't hear about the... Uh, Armed Venezuelans taking over Aurora, Colorado apartment complexes. Well, the same nasty Venezuelans armed broke into an old lady's house in Dallas, Texas, right here in good old Texas. And Dallas, of course, is run by the Democrats for the most part, like many major cities. They broke into her house and they beat the living you-know-what out of her and forced her to open up her safe and took cash and jewelry amounting to $75,000. Of course, the big question is, how did they know she had a safe? Probably because there was a cleaning lady in there. And she saw it and then just used her cell phone to call her buddies, and they went in there and robbed the place. 
or like I said before, the Venezuelans have access to company data that sells these safes or the people who delivered the safe and installed it, right? This is what's going on in America. If you're not paying attention, you will be a victim. I guarantee it. Yeah, I put on the Discord server how in Israel, women are walking down the street, Israeli women with um, AR rifles on their back in plain clothes. And women serve in the military in commanding um, positions. And why? Because there's so few, the population of Israel is not that big, so both men and women command. And of course, they're highly trained people. So just imagine that in the United States, if you had men and women that understood the value of being armed to defend themselves and the nation, man, what a different issue we would have. I can guarantee you, you bet your, you bet your ass. That's right. I said it ass. Those Venezuelans who uh, have been terrorizing America would have had their asses handed to them within the hour. Within the hour. That's how Israel hand, handled it. And that's how America should handle it. The difference is that Israel, all young men and women have to go through the military. Here, it's up to the civilian to be trained. So guess what? No one's going to do it for you if you don't do it yourself. And if you think you can just keep relying on luck to protect you, there's going to come a day, very likely anyway, not saying this is guaranteed, but there's going to come a day most likely that by the time you realize you need to defend yourself, it'll be too late. You want to know why? Because you won't have the training. Because you didn't take the time to train yourself. You won't know how to use a firearm. You'll be, you're going to continue to be scared of firearms because everybody on the left tells you firearms are bad. You're going to refuse to exercise your constitutional God-given right to defend yourself because you're too big of a, a pussy. Oh my gosh, I said the word out loud. I'm sorry. You're too weak constitutionally, morally. I dare you to go to Israel or jump online and tell the people of Israel that guns are bad. Yeah, good luck. You're going to get mowed over. Mode over. So, yes, even though this channel is primarily about economics and trading, I'm here to tell you, I don't care what political party you're in. And I said this before, when the legal immigrants or anybody else who has e evil-minded, evil-hearted, wants to commit a crime against you and your family, when they come carjacking you, attack you at your ATMs, attacking you at the gas station, breaking into your home, do you think they're going to stop and hesitate and ask you if you voted Democrat? <laughs> you know, get freaking real. Get freaking real. It's up to you to get trained. I recommend go get your license to carry whatever state you're in. If you're in a state that doesn't allow it, guess what? You need to move. If you're in California, adios. Elon Musk. Did you see the sign that Elon Musk put on the top of the building in the, uh, the old headquarters for uh, Tesla? In San Francisco? Yeah. <laughs> G-F-Y in big neon lights. Go <clears throat> yourself. Yep, that was his message to San Francisco and California as he made his final exit and brought the headquarters to Texas. Yeah. Elon Musk, one of the most successful men in the history of histories, Knows a thing or two about being successful, and he knows damn well California is a complete rat hole. And he got his business out of there because he's smart. So if you live in California, Illinois, New York, all these places that prevent you from carrying your firearms, pretty much, get the hell out of there. What are you waiting for? Okay, that's my take on the S&P 500. Let's get back to the charts. Um, I just see the market going higher until it doesn't. Yeah, that's right. I said it. The market is ignoring major cycles. Okay, no dispute in that. It's right there. We see it in the charts. Um, though this could break late, right? We're way over here on this side of this this cycle. October 29th is there. November 13th, yes, it could, it could break hard. Maybe it breaks two, three, four, five hundred points. I don't know. Okay, when it does break, when this does roll over, then we'll readdress it. But right now, market looks strong. Let's go to the trade of the day. Trade of the day. It's 
Let's put on the Guinness Plus indicator. We're going to talk about um, Fibonacci fans and maybe, I think it's pronounced GAN or GAN fans. One of my members uses that for, has been using it a couple times, a few times for crude oil uh, with much, much success. We'll take a look at that real quick. But for first, let's go to the trade of the day. Okay, nothing going on there. Market's still strong. Let's take a look at the five minute chart. Look at that. Look how strong this market is. Crazy. Five minute chart. Right here. Last night, 10.25 p.m. here, Central Time. Right there, there's your trade. Boom, plum candlestick. To the moon. And why would you why would you trade long? Because look at this. Here's this here's the zero line. Am, am I just imagining this? Is everything above the zero line? Everything is above the zero line. Once it got here, it took off. Super simple trading, guys and gals. You should be paying attention to this stuff. Okay. Above the zero line comes it gets up here, starts rolling over, exit your trade, take your profit. Boom. It turn goes up, get back in. If you want to be it's gonna you're gonna have a lot of commission doing this, but you're still gonna make a lot of money. If you want to be super safe, that's how you trade that. Look at this, never touches the bottom, never touches the bottom. Never touches the bottom, never touches the bottom. Right? Pre market, it gave it typical pre market stuff here in the US, it dumps some value, some price, I should say, and then takes off again. And even when it dumped, look at this, it stayed above the zero line, stayed above the zero line. Trade of the day right there, bam. From then on, it was it was go. Green light special, go. Huge money from 58.60 all the way to about 59.10 pretty safely. 50 points, 50 friggin' points. Cut in half, you got 25, $2,500. $2,500 with one contract, 2,500 biggins. Yeah, trade of the day right there. Okay, let's move on to the rest. For those that only wanted the SP 500 and you had to listen to my political rant, I don't care if you don't like it. Don't watch my videos if you don't like it, I don't care. Let's move on to the rest of the products. I'm gonna bang through these pretty quick. Let's look at the Dow Jones transportation daily chart and we'll do the rest of this. Just like the rest of the indices, Dow Jones Transportation making a pretty good run October 27th, November 4th. Not even a hint of pulling back yet. Though we are getting some elevation here in the SMI, just like the other indices. Le Russell 2000. Russell 2000 also finally, which was doing this forever in a day, has made a bounce. Okay, tomorrow's supposed to be a cycle low. It came early over here, probably like on the 12th or something. 10th, so it came early. Okay. NASDAQ. October 8th cycle low kind of happened a little bit early there, right? Flat, a little early. October 16th, that's in two days. <sighs> Looks like it's going to ignore it. Pretty high up here though, 75. Over here we got up to 87. Here was 87, 86. Guess what? This one over here was only 63. This may not be done yet. Crossed over here recently. Could go higher. Again, October 16th right there. November 13th right there. This cycle over here looks like it's, you know, whatever. Not even a hint of pulling back with only two days to go. It all hinges on this, like, early to mid-November. If that cycle low doesn't happen, get ready for the market to go absolutely ballistic. Maybe it'll happen in December. I remember back in 2018, we had a massive collapse in December. The market can surprise you and do things that you don't think it's going to do. Okay, let's look at uh, the Nike 225 over in Japan. What is happening? Been on fire. Super bullish. On fire. Didn't even get down to the bottom line here. On fire. Plenty of room to go there for the Nike 225. Don't think it's done going up. Let's look at the Japanese yen. What's happening here? Japanese yen's gone negative territory. I did say last week, Japanese yen would go negative. It's gone negative momentum. A couple days ago, looked super weak. Japanese yen has given it up hard. 
Looks like to me, guys and gals, it's blown through this cycle low. There may be another cycle over here that's going to develop. Maybe it's like there might be a cycle low coming out of that. And uh, yeah, there may be a cycle low that gets formed using this, this low right here. There may be something like this going on, you know. Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Right now, the Japanese yen looks like it's got more room to go. Maybe it's trying to find a bottom. Hasn't found it yet. Let's look at the euro futures. The euro dollar. Same thing here. Hasn't found a bottom. Trying to. Super negative. All these currencies are taking a huge dive. Which means the US dollar is probably going to the moon. We'll have to look at the US dollar. October 20th is the cycle low. This thing is super negative. Let's look at the British pound. British pound. The only one still positive momentum. But may it looks like it's trying to find a bottom. This is the strongest of all the currencies. And uh, but it's probably gonna go negative here in the next couple of days, most likely. October 14th would be today, it's cycle low. So maybe it survives. Maybe. Maybe, but I don't think so. It probably will go negative here. The momentum is so strong, it's gonna be really hard for it not to go negative, but it may turn around, do a, it may, this may take off. But it may do one of those and a dipsy do back down into this area, which looks like mm, November 15th. Okay, that's what that is. Let's take a look at the US dollar because I haven't looked at it, looked at that in a while. Yeah, it's on a rampage. It's at 103. So after getting smacked all the way down to 100, it's, it's on a roll. So US dollar looks very strong. Looks like this, this was possibly the low that came early. Okay. US dollar is rolling up to 103, so it survived not going below 100. Okay, let's look at um, let's look at gold. What's happened with gold? Gold is bouncing. Gold looks strong. Even though it rolled over, it crossed over here. At the moment, anyway, it looks strong. Today, I think it got up to what? It got pretty high. It got to 2684, so it didn't quite get back to 2700. But gold looks kind of strong here, making a bounce. Uh, crude oil, let's look at that. We'll come back to the two-hour chart here in a second. Crude oil taking, getting a smackdown. Big, huge down day for crude oil. Look at this. Over $3 down. I said before I didn't think crude oil was going to survive. It is positive momentum here. So we'll see if it does the bounce, not go to the bottom here. But it came strong out of this cycle low, giving some back. Let's see what it does. Having a hard go of it right now, though. That's a big pullback, back down to $71.86. Let me show you the two-hour chart here because I've got a. I've got the Fibonacci fan on here. Now, one of my members uses the GAN slash Fibonacci fan. You can you can do that too. I'm just looking looking at the Fibonacci fan alone. And let's see if I can get this to play nice so we can see this a little better. So why is this so powerful? Well, let's take a look at this together. Look at this line right here. This is the see if I can get it to work. This is the 38.2%. Fibonacci line right here. Okay. And what does it do? Provide support, 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 support. That's the power of this. You know where support is because obviously we're going up. If we were going down, you'd be looking for resistance. But since this is going up, we're looking at support. Okay. Let me show you another support area that's really obvious on this fan. 61.8% level. Where's the, where's the support? Here, 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 here. Look at all that support. So you have a group of support there, a group of support there. That's the power of these fans. Okay, you get a sense of support, right? Very common to get support. What was that one, 23.8? No, 38.2, sorry, 38.2, and this is the 61.8. Those are two extremely common Fibonacci um, retracement, you know, sequence percentages. Okay, so you can use this fan to great effect. That's what he's doing. Okay, he doesn't he doesn't use exactly this one. He uses the the Gon 
the GAN, GAN, however you pronounce, slash Fibonacci is a little bit different. But this is the same idea. Okay, so pretty cool. Shout out to that member. Not going to mention his name, but if you want to use that, you can use it. What's the name of this? This is, this. in this case, this is a drawing tool. Okay, and let me get this out of the way. Of course, it had to be right in the way. Uh, this one's called the Fibonacci fan. Okay, I think he was using, I don't know if I have the GAN fan in here or not. Yeah, there it is, GAN fan down there. You can use that one too. He's using um, Ninja Trader, where I'm on the TOS platform, but they both have similar tools. Pretty cool. All right, just want to show that. Okay, we talked about crude oil. Let's move on. We talked about, did we talk about gold? Gold, yeah, we talked about gold. Let's talk about silver real quick. Let's look at silver. Daily chart. Silver. A um, little bit of a bounce. And now, eh, silver looks, I can be honest, even though it's positive territory, silver looks a little bit weak. It looks like it's having a hard time mounting some kind of bounce here. Okay, so I'm a little cautious about silver. But the cool thing about that is if silver makes a big dive, you can acquire silver for a hedge against inflation. Like what I've been doing, acquiring literal physical silver in the hand. Okay. And remember, folks, even if you have a safe in your home, you put your silver in there, you put your gold in there, you put your jewelry in there, you got maybe some guns in there, and you believe you're safe, safe, safe. It's a big, strong safe. No one's getting that stuff. And they break into your home, they wait for you to come in just like they did this old lady in Dallas, and they beat the living you know what out of you, and they force you to open up your safe. <laughs> Don't be stupid. Don't let your neighbors, your friends, your coworkers, your cleaning lady, anybody know you have a safe. Keep your mouth shut. Keep it hidden. Tell your wife, your kids, don't talk about the safe. You might as well just put a sign out in the front of your house that says, I have a big safe in my house. Please come in and beat the living crap out of me and steal my stuff because if you torture me enough, I'll be forced to open it. You got to think smart, folks. You got to be vigilant. I didn't say vigilante and I didn't say go commit violence. I just said you got to be vigilant. Americans need to be vigilant. I don't know if you realize this, but we're in a time of war. Oh, I can hear him now. We're, I don't do we're not. This is ridiculous. I can't believe you just said that in this video. You actually said we're at war. That's ridiculous. We're not at war. Prove to me you're at war. Eh, show me a link. Uh. Okay. There's a difference between traditional war, like with tanks rolling down the road and guerrilla warfare. Okay. We're at war. When you got ganged Venezuelan members and other Muslims and whatever coming to the nation, terrorizing people. That's not just crime. Okay, that's an invasion. You better freaking wise up or get left way behind. No one's going to come to your rescue. The police will all, you know what the police are? Thank God for police. We need them. But you know what they are? A dollar short and a day late because they can't be everywhere all the time. So yes, you can call the police if something, something bad is happening. If you live in a leftist area, good luck with the police actually enforcing the law. <laughs> good luck with that. Even if you live in a conservative area like Texas, by the time they got there, the crime is done. And I, I, I will submit that uh, what we're seeing coming across the border is not crime. That's war. Better wise up. Or be like the people up in Aurora, Colorado, or the old lady in Dallas where you get your ass handed to you. Go ahead. Go ahead and rely just on hope that you won't be attacked. I just, I'm just going to rely on the sheer number of people in the United States that I won't be one of the victims. I'm just going to hope and just hope and just hope. And you know what that is? That's a failure to plan. And so your plan will fail. Okay, silver looks like it's weak to me. Looks like it's going to pull back some more. Um... Let's look at corn. Oi, corn getting a smackdown. Corn is getting a smackdown. That cycle low, though, I will say this. Here's one of the cycle lows that actually is working, unlike the indices. Now, here's a commodity like corn where the cycle low is absolutely bang on. Look at that. What a beauty. And these cycles really weren't that strong, but this cycle low absolutely nailed it. Uh, it's not done. Corn has not found the bottom. Not found the bottom. I don't think it's done yet. 
Uh, do I think it's okay to short corn? Yeah, probably still okay to short small position. Just be careful because you could be coming out of this cycle low. Like it even could even happen tomorrow. So I'm cautious about taking any trade right now with corn. But to me, it looks like it's not done. Um, let's look at XLP. XLP, look at this, guys. XLP is making a bounce. Oh, bouncer Rooney. Now it did go negative territory here uh, on Friday. Okay, as far as the uh, MACD. Okay, but but uh, this is a pretty strict. Well, okay, it's not really super strong bounce. It's it's a bounce. Just it's gonna have to do a lot of work to get out of this negative territory. Okay, so a little caution. I still still think there's a little bit of room here to go. You could probably go along on this if you want to trade options on it. It might be okay. Okay. That's it. Covered everything. Become a member of $7.99. I had a, uh, one, somebody on YouTube. This is like the second or third time they told me this. They said the, in, the Asian, uh, the, disc, the Discord memberships for a lot of the people who do it in Asia, they charge 99 cents. <laughs> he says, you need to lower your, your membership to 99 cents. That's what all the Asians do. You know what my response to that is? Go join the Asians. Go pay your 99 cents and join them. I hope you get value out of it. You know, you know why the person wrote that message? Because they know that the 99 cent um, subscriptions that the Asians provide are garbage. There's no real value in those subscriptions. If they were, you'd be a millionaire. So my, my message to that person is, go join one of the Asian Discord servers and pay your 99 cents. I hope you're getting good value for their analysis, though I seriously doubt it. <laughs> okay. No, I'm not going to charge only 99 cents. Nope. As a matter of fact, I'm, I already know for a fact I'm not charging enough for this service. You want to become a member, stop crying about it, pay $7.99. If you don't want to do that, you want to go pay the 99 cents of the Asian Discord servers, all the best to you. I'm not, you know, I'm not twisting your arm to make you become a member. But I, I can already tell by that comment alone that you really want to become a member, but you're, you refuse to pay for it. And you try to strong arm me by saying, pay, you lower your subscription service to 99 cents because some slackies in Asia are doing that who have terrible analysis. If you think their analysis is good, then what are you doing on my YouTube channel? <laughs> it's, like, it's obvious that, you know, you're talking crap. That's it. Want to become a member? The link's in the description. Yes, pay 79. If you don't want to pay, don't pay. I don't care. Talk to you all again real soon next time.